About a decade or so back, my grandfather was still alive, and we were quite close. And he had a cousin that would come up periodically to visit from San Francisco. Grandpa was ideologically pretty conservative, <laughs> to say the least. Drill sergeant in the Marine Corps, Reagan Republican, you know the sort, devout religious adherent. And his cousin was exactly the opposite. If you imagine that I live in Western Pennsylvania, how culturally distinct that is from, well, <laughs> the extremely left-leaning San Francisco. You could imagine the sort of conversations that would exchange between the two. Nevertheless, there's, uh, there was a wonderful lesson I learned from the two of them. Even though they were totally different, they remained inseparable friends. They were really close. It was a marriage of the opposites, and it was something beautiful. Anyway... This uh, video is about this thing, and my grandfather's first cousin brought it up for me one time as a gift because he was intrigued by my tinkerings. And if there were ever a tool of the tinkerer, this is it. So take a look at it up close. We'll take a really close look at it under the lens and I'll show you all about it. I have an occasion to use it as a matter of fact, so we'll test it out. Sort of beautiful. What is it? Uh, very dark hardwood, I don't know, but we can speculate as we go. It's threaded. Threaded wood, isn't that cool? And inside... We have a whole bunch of carving bits. The back side even has a piece of metal, but I would not pound on it at this point in its life. The front is a sort of collet thing, and the way it works is relatively simple, efficient, and interesting. Similar to a router or an old ratchet, the bits are square, fit in like so, and then you tighten the collet just by hand. And look at that. Cool, isn't it? For contrast here. The piece of wood that you're looking at, this is all cherry. And this is a cradle for a pipe. It doesn't fit at the moment because the pipe needs to sit into sort of a little dig out. And this tool will be the perfect way to accomplish that. I love that you can still see the heat treatment on it. I don't pretend to understand that science of metal hardness. I think it's interesting that you can still see that rainbow color. I also think it's interesting that the Craftsman continued to sharpen this even though it had a brutal ding in it there. This is really sharp. No question about it, this was from the days when tools were not for display. This is a tool of utility. Somebody used this. Let's see if we can make out the name. I don't know that that's even legible. We can try. If you think you can, if you think you know what it is, drop me a comment. I'm interested to know its history and its age. This was in somebody's garage probably for, oh, I don't know, 80 years. And it comes with quite the array of tools too. They really packed it in there. It's like a clown car. I can only speculate, but this seems like a screwdriver, but it's sharp. So, I don't know. Maybe it was intended to have multi-purpose for whatever you're tinkering with. Some guys might have wanted to use it as a screwdriver, and other people might have wanted to sharpen it into chisels. But it seems, in general, to be targeted towards a, well, a wood carver. I don't know what this square thing is. It's kind of neat. What would you want to poke a four-sided hole in wood for? I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas. Okay, a breakdown of the insides. How does this call it work? I don't know if the threads were supposed to be that low profile or if they're just that worn away from use. 
probably a bit of both. These fit in like so. There's only two of them, which is kind of unusual. And then as this cone, as it draws tighter, the cone gets pressed in and it squeezes. Really ingenious in its simplicity. Before we judge it, let's consider the culture of the time. First of all, you're a woodcarver, so you're already patient. And second of all, uh, if it is for wood carving, you kind of exhaust one tool before you move on to the next one. So you're not changing them all that frequently. I know, I know, from today's point of view, we're used to this. But that doesn't matter. The emergence of new tools doesn't negate the appropriateness of old tools. So let's see if it can dig. Safety first, I know, I know. We'll make a nice, simple, homemade vise. That's probably something like an old timey wood carver would use, right? Okay, let's see if it goes. Note that I've never sharpened this. I'm not sure how I would feel about doing so, to be honest. I'm of two minds. Part of me thinks, what's the point in worshiping some old tool? And the other part of me thinks, isn't it a piece of our past? Shouldn't we kind of take care of it? or treat it with a sort of respect. I don't know. It has a really steep angle on it. I want to try a different tip. Oh, that kind of works. Watch what I did. Watch, you can see from that side. I go straight in and kind of move in an arc. Oh wow, that cuts way better. I think with some practice, I could really make use of this thing. I'm going to switch to the bit that has a lower angle on it. It's the one that's chipped at the end. See, that's not so bad, swapping them. This one does not seem to cut as well directly down, but I have to kind of come at it almost vertically because we're going directly into end grain cherry. So I can't really attack it from the side. And I especially can't attack it from the side that you're on. <laughs> That's not too bad. It tears out the grain a little bit. Well, I'll say this about it. It's much faster, or not, maybe not faster. Well, it's faster than sanding. And it's certainly quieter than using a rotary tool. And I'm not inhaling a whole bunch of dust. Like so many things in this style of sculpture, you kind of just have to fall into flow. It would take me, you know, a couple hours, and then I would find a sort of comfortable in the zone pace. At first, you think about it real hard, and then you internalize it, and then you kind of just lose the thought, and it becomes almost subconscious. And when, when, you, when you get to that place, you're in flow, and it just becomes natural, and that's when work becomes enjoyable. <sighs> so enjoyable, in fact, that I genuinely feel sorry for people who have jobs that they can't get into flow with. 
If you're one of those people, get a hobby. <laughs> and back to the steeper angle bit. Yeah, I think this one's way better. I can feel it cut sometimes. Please give me a break on technique. You are directly in my way. But we can't really discuss this if you can't see it, right? <laughs> I have to get all the way down underneath where that drill bit damaged. One thing's for sure, I have to give this um, tool credit for being comfortable. Its design really suits the palm well. So if you ever want to make something like this, you should definitely use this as a pattern. Consider that all of it is being used by pressing right into the meaty part of your palm and then making the force go forward into a pinpoint. Very well designed. Easy as that. Oh, come on. Remember what I said? Judge things in their context. In my context, I'm good when I use electricity. <laughs> but you have to respect people that do carve.